Hi, this is Jerry Capote of WallDecalBusiness.com. Thanks for stopping by. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a wall decal design or a decal design for that matter. It doesn't really matter, but it's the easy and inexpensive way to do it. So let me show you how. The first thing you should know is that I'm using Adobe Illustrator CS2, and it uh, really doesn't matter. You can use the latest version of Adobe and should be pretty much the same functions, so not a big deal. Now I'm creating this design for some friends on Facebook, which uh, um, what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to create a, a video for them. So I'm going to use this design. So it's going to be a lot of fun. But uh, let's talk about this. First of all, you probably know that this is a font. In fact, I can select it and I can type on it and it'll change. So that's a font. And that this font is the fine liner script. Okay. And this, although it looks like a graphic, believe it or not, it's also a font. In fact, if I type in, for example, U, you get underwears. Now that's actually it's a caps lock U. And uh, if I type in G, you get a guitar. Again, it's the caps lock, capital G. Now let me type in S. So you have a lot of you can see you have a lot of graphics uh, with this font. Uh, this font set and it's called Alpha Builder and Builder spelled B-I-L-D-E-R and I found this on dafont.com D-A-F-O-N-T.com where they have thousands of different style fonts including these graphic fonts and you can download them uh, for free and as, you know as long as you're not, not a business uh, you know you can use them uh, in some cases, if you are a business, they still let you use them. Uh, but some of them do ask for, if you're going to use it for commercial use, some of them do ask for, for a fee and others ask for a donation. This particular one, uh, the author of this font uh, asked for donations. And it's really, yeah, I guess it's really up to you. But I did donate because I was really, you know, really appreciated this set. So send something over to them so uh, that, that's how I you know that's how you get the uh, fonts you can go on the font.com and, and there's you know probably other sites but the font has thousands of fonts to look at and just download and use it in your word processor and it's really cool anyways so moving on what I need to do is first of all let me uh, pull up my Roland cut studio plugin because I want I need to use it so I can look at what's going on and first thing I want to do is I'm going to select this uh, thank you uh, um, font and uh, well it's not thank you font but just the thank you and I, I want to show you this here um, if uh, notice that this is a an overlapping font because it touches it so you have some overlapping here and, and there and the problem with that I'm going to show you it's like unlike if you use something like Times New Roman the problem with that is that the cutter is going to cut you know, when when the fonts overlap, the cutter's going to cut there. I'm going to show you, for example, I'm going to go to the Roll and Cut Studio. I'm going to click on it, bring it, bring it up. And already you can see where it overlaps here. You see? It overlaps here. And you get these little pieces that, you know, potentially can fall off because they're not all in one. You Now you got one, two, three, you know, separate little pieces. You really don't want to do that to send to your customers because, you know, you, you just don't know. Uh, I wouldn't do that. So what I do, let me close this. I'm not going to save it. What I do with this, and let me bring back my Roland Studio little viewer. It's actually this is just the viewer. And then you cl uh, click into Roland Cut Studio. What I do is, for example, I'm going to take this font. And I'm going to edit, copy. And then I'm going to go to File, New. And I'm just going to create a, a new uh, file here to... Let me just uh, bring it a little smaller here and bring it up a little bit so you guys can see it. And I guess that's pretty good. Okay, so I'm going to control V to paste what I copied. There it is. And I'm just going to bring it up here so we can see it. And what I'm going to do is actually I'm just going to take this file I brought in from the other one. File, I'm going to go to File, um, Export, and I'm going to export it as a JPEG, just that thank you thing. And so it says JPEG, and I'm going to call it thank you. Save it right on my desktop for e uh, quick and easy access. 
and I'm gonna save it as a RGB. I always leave it like that. Click OK, and I'm done now. I really don't need this anymore. I was just using it momentarily. I'm gonna go back to my original file. I'm gonna go to File Place. I'm gonna place that JPEG file now. Let me look for it. It's called Thank You, and here it is. Thank you, JPEG. Place it. Uh, sometimes you gotta click it twice, and and that's it. Now we gotta do a couple of things to this because it's just not ready for, you know, for cutting. So I'm just gonna put it up here so you can see what we're doing. I'm gonna take this. I'm gonna live trace it, and then I'm gonna live paint it. Now these buttons, every time you click on them, they jump all around. So I'm gonna live paint it, and the last thing I'm gonna do is expand it, but it just jumps all around. You'll see. Live paint, jumped again, and expand. I finally expanded. Now it's not quite ready because uh, as you can see it uh, it has these outlines plus uh, there's there's these uh, cuts in here you got to you got to take out otherwise the uh, it, the cutter is going to cut twice within these areas so I'm going to remove that it's real easy I, I click it double click it just to grab it now this is just going to grab the outside part here and I'm going to delete hit delete there oh, oops let me go one more time and hit delete there you see how it removed that and you can see what's going on here. That's why you need to pull up the, this uh, plugin, this little uh, uh, thumbnail plugin here. Anyway, so I also need to go into these ones in here. You see that there's none here. I can click everywhere else. There's none, but these right in here, I had to almost like triple click to, to, to get in there. Uh, I'm going to delete that. I need to delete that. And then I need to delete this. And there's nothing else that I can see that, you know, that would be a problem. Otherwise, you, like I said, you'd get double cuts with the cutter. You don't want the cutter to go twice over the same over the same cut. So that's it. This is ready. I'm just going to take it and put it exactly on top of this one. Now, I'm not going to leave that one uh, under there because you'll still get all those cuts. In fact, now you get, du you get double cuts everywhere plus those excess cuts that you get everything else. So this is what I do. I just place it there because I want it exactly where I designed it. So I don't have to go back to the whole designing process. It's there. It's in the same exact place. And I'm going to go to Objects, Arrange, and Send to Back. So I'm going to send that top one now to the back. And you'll see that now the top, the uh, the original one popped up in the front because now it's in the front. And I can just select it and delete it. And I stay with the one that I, that I created. And now you'll see that if I pull up my Roland Cut Studio, those cuts that we had issues with, as you can see, where it where they overlapped no longer no longer an issue and uh it, and it just it's much better so it's almost ready i'm just gonna uh I, remember we had to include this little guy so i'm gonna right click he's a font so right click create outlines and there it is so when i send to my roland cut studio it's ready and of course my next step would be to set up my vinyl cutters so that's it. I hope this video helped. Um, I'll, I'm going to continue creating these instructional videos, so come back frequently. And thanks for stopping by.